So we got some sad news, and this is really, really sad news because this mm-hmm. is something that uh, it happened over the weekend of uh, TFCon, and when the news broke, it was just like, man, like this was a guy yeah. that I wish we had more at our shows and stuff, and was a very important part of my favorite Transformer series of all time, Beast Wars, and a creative force behind it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Larry Dottilio, uh passed away um March 16th, 2019, right during TFCon. And him and Bob Forward were crucial in everything that we know today that made Beast Wars so special. And the amazing thing about Larry was uh, not long after he started working on the first couple of episodes of Beast Wars, and you have to understand, this is when the internet was a small entity at the time. Uh, Before forums, before message boards, before... Uh, Twitter or any of that stuff, we had uh, the old uh, group system. So Mm. we had something called Alt Toys Transformers, and any old school fans know what Alt Toys Transformers was. It was the ATT, as we used to call it. And Larry used to be a regular on there, and he would ask and answer questions of the, the hardcore online fans. Keep in mind, that fandom at the time numbered of that of 150 if you were lucky. Mm. Uh, And he used it as a way to, as a quote, to quote him, both Bob and I are fully aware of the old show and we're adamant on producing a better product with the help of the fans. And in a lot of ways, it's, I feel like it's his putting an all olive branch out to that old, that part of the fandom. Uh, and that's where we probably ended up getting stuff like episodes like possession and other, you know, um, what's it called there? Uh, all the season two stuff that would lead to more like uh, Cybertronian looking designs and stuff like that. Mm. I mean, the episodes that he's credited for as a writer, uh, the web power surge, the spark spider game, other voices, part one, other voices, part two, uh, aftermath, other visits, part one, other visits, part two, deep metal, other victories. He also worked on the Predacon rising movie, uh, excuse me, Predacon Rising for Transformers Animated, so he even did some animated episodes, mm-hmm. um, which, again, one of the best Transformers series of all time. So this was a dude who was an amazing writer, had a really good grasp on when it came to writing characters and creating uh, creating good environments for characters to grow and develop. He's actually also credited as the co-creator of She-Ra, yep. uh, along with, what's his name there, Wendell, uh, J. Michael Strig- Stravinsky, I believe Stravinsky. it is. Yeah. And J. Michael Stravinsky did a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff as yeah. well. Um, um, another, another thing with too, Marvel and everybody at DC, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like his work precedes him as well. Another thing too that he gets credit for, which is a big thing for anyone who's into tabletop gaming, was he was uh, integral behind the creation of Call of Cthulhu. Mm. And so that's a, and the, he actually got that job during a writer strike. So like that was kind of like one of the biggest, uh, <laughs> one of the biggest like, uh, you know, out of nowhere jobs that he got that ended up exploding into something incredible which shows that sometimes some of the best writers come out of some of the, the least expected areas. Like he was a guy who wasn't really a writer and he, he mm. fell into that and ended up becoming one of the greatest RPG campaigns of all time. Uh, if yeah. you're, if you're a D and D player, so well, not a D and D, a tabletop player. So, you know, um, he was, he was integral behind that stuff. Go ahead. You were gonna say something. I was gonna say other stuff. He's uh, also credited for, he worked on, uh, fat Albert. Uh, uh, yes. He worked, he worked on uh, Shira, the Princess of Power. Obviously, he worked on Rock and Roll Wrestling. Yes, he worked on Centurions. Centurions, yeah. He worked on uh, Galaxy High High School. That see, and that one. What's interesting with that was that if you look at the voice acting crew on that one, that's a lot of Beast Wars people. Mm. So that's uh, Ian Corlett, that's Sue Blue, who's who ended up becoming the voice director for Beast Wars. So I would mm-hmm. not be surprised if there's some connection there of how that all came about. And Galaxy Eye came before it, but and yeah. he worked on Bionic Six. He worked on Captain Power and the Soldiers of Future. Another amazing he, show. He worked on the California Raisin Show. I'm just going yes. through his IMDb, and I'm just literally going through a, a quite a chunk of my childhood. Uh, he also got to work on the TV movie Captain Power: The Beginning. He worked on the real Ghostbusters, uh, the TV show Swamp Thing, uh, Peter Pan and the Pirates. He did one episode. That was the Fox one, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, he did one episode of Murder, She Wrote. Uh, He did Conan the Adventurer. He did one episode of that. Uh, I think his biggest, biggest, one of his biggest things that any sci-fi fan knows, he did Babylon 5. Yeah. 
he was a big so anybody that's really into sci-fi from the 90s uh babylon 5 was one of his big things because i had a friend that like after he watched beast wars and became obsessed with it he started watching babylon 5 and he kept pushing it on me going like this is what you (laughs) need to watch you know now the beast wars does because even because babylon 5 was so good apparently that it, it affected the ongoing um star trek show that was up happening alongside of it ah, okay. so that was uh deep space nine so deep space nine was kind of like doing its own thing and then babylon 5 was like really going doing different stuff people were really paying attention to it mm. and it kind of just kind of matched it a little bit it shifted completely uh, from what i've been told uh and i don't blame him uh also he worked on I don't, a, a short-lived show uh it was only he only did one episode but it was called hypernauts oh that one I'm so familiar with. So that one, it was a, I think it was an ABC show and it was like these three um, characters that were, that were in these like, uh, it was like a live action show and they were in these like three um, CGI mechs and it ended up in a different part of the universe or something and they had to fight this um, this uh, alien bad guy and then this, this other alien that was part of his race was helping them along as well. It was like these three teens or something like that so i remember watching that show as a kid and thinking it was really really cool so to know that he actually worked on that show is pretty cool he worked on the uh the newer he-man and the masters of the universe in 2000 series um he worked on transformers Am- animated with one episode of that and um they they credit him in shira and the princess of power the newest tv series uh as created character created by uh as and they credit him as lawrence g DiTio. yeah and the thing is, is that um, Whew, he he was lot. he was an individual that um, if you're a female and a fan of sci-fi, he was a big proponent and pushing for a lot of that stuff because there was an interview on the Kid Rhino version of the DVD box set of Beast Wars, uh, specifically the season one DVD box set. If you ever get a chance, uh, there's he has an interview on there uh, that was called The Soul of Beast Wars, and on that box set, uh, he talked about how when he was on ATT. Uh, he was always like dropping little hints and stuff to fans, and he was saying that at the moment he was pushing to get female members on both sides of the factions. Mm. So of course, obviously, we ended up getting Black Arachnia in the end, uh, on and the, Airazor. Well, that's just it. And he got Black. He got his Black Arachnia, and mm. we all know how that went about with with Mainframe, how they ended up designing her. But it was actually that he actually had to fight quite a bit to push hard to get Air Razor because Air Razor originally was supposed to be female, uh, excuse me, male in the script. Uh. And and it was his pushing that made her female in the show, and then as a result made the toy female too. Ultimately, in the end, so and that that's a key one because what people don't realize was that Air Razor was the first time ever a Transformer toy was female. And it wasn't just a repaint of something because mm. because we had even Minerva. You could go as far back. Minerva was the first ever technically female Transformer toy, but it was in Japan only. And it was kind of a, re, you know, it was a repaint of Nightbeat. Like there was like a, you know, it wasn't, it was like, it was, I always say when a female character is just a repaint, you know, it's, it's a consolation prize. You know what I mean? Yeah. It wasn't intended. And then you move forward and you got Black Arachnia. Yeah, she did get a toy. But it was a repaint of Tarantulas, you know. So Air Razor really was the first one. It was the first one that this toy is its own mold, and it's female, and that's how it's going to be. And so he was a big pusher for that. And so, like, you know, it's a big thanks to him that you got that. And it doesn't surprise me because when you look at his history of the stuff he's created, I mean, look, yeah. Shira, you know what I mean? Like, that says a lot about um, his frame of mind and, and stuff to put a stronger female uh, connection in science fiction and in all our stuff. So he was, this dude, this dude is is super important when it came to just all kinds of science fiction, everything of that manner. And uh, again, if you watch, if you watch the interview on the Beast Wars uh, DVD box set, I remember it quite vividly. Um, quite a smart guy. Quite a smart guy, really was obsessed with character creation, really was obsessed with, with character development, small groups, small family groups. No, you know, the ability for a viewer to get, get to know characters so well that you're then able to know how they would be with each other as if they were family. 
you know, and, and that's the thing I used to always say about with Beast Wars as opposed to, say, Generation 1 or some other series is, is Beast Wars, you really knew how everyone was with each other. Yeah. How, if, you, if Cheetor was in a room with Dinobot, you knew how they would be. Or if Cheetor was in a room with Rat Trap, or if Cheetor was in a room with... with like uh, everyone's relationship with each yeah, other. Yeah, everyone's relationships were... And that, like, made, that made uh, Rat Trap and Dinobot's last stand moment, like, all the better, all yeah, the more worth it all the more oh my god you're super invested in these two guys that really don't like each other but they have to make it work yeah. or else they're gonna die <laughs> it was it, it, it's it's a shame to hear that because you know the, the sad thing is I, i'm trying to find because maybe someone could help me out here i've been trying to look for his date of birth uh all i got unfortunately and i've looked at so many different sources and unfortunately all i got is 1940 that's all i have so all I know right now is that he's like, you know, he was in his late seventies, you know, that's all I know really mm. like, like 70, which is still, you know, you still got some, you know, some mileage still on the clock. So in my opinion, still young, in my opinion, at least to me. Um, and it's a shame that we lost him because I feel that in this weird time now that transformer is transformers is creatively, we need someone like that. I just feel that like someone like him would be a, a really good addition. I mean, it does not surprise me that, you know, like the guy who worked on Beast Wars and even in a small way contributed to probably everyone's second favorite Transformer series, if not their favorite in animated, you know, does not surprise me at all. So and not and again, when you look at his list of other stuff he's done, you know, Captain Power and Soldiers of the Future, even though it wasn't a grand success, was another one of these shows that has a huge cult following because of how well the character development was on it. And 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 the ideas. You know, like if you go back and you look at the ideas for Captain Power and Soldier of the Future, it was like the prototype to the Matrix. You know, and I by, by that I mean the the Keanu Reeve movies. You know, so there's there's a lot of smart ideas that this guy had. And it's such a shame to hear that he passed away because he was a large part of my childhood. And I don't say that lightly. I say that majorly because there was just a lot of really good stuff. And, and to hear him pass, that he passed away, yeah. and then all the people at TFCon that we had as guests that were in rela related to the stuff that he created, it really was kind of sad to hear that over the weekend. Yeah. And, I mean, it just sucks. It just really freaking sucks. And it's just... It sucks because I would have liked to see him do one last thing with Transformers. Yeah, exactly. In, in any kind of capacity because right now we're in a – like Cyberverse isn't terrible, but we're just in a really weird place right now because of the movies and stuff. And anyone who just listened to our previous discussion about what's going on with the movies in general, um, it just would have been great to have a guy like that around. And he's, and he's still – look, he, like when he did animated, he was – you know it was only a couple of years ago, so he's probably still very sharp. And I and I know uh, after T, after this TFCon weekend, we met a whole bunch of different writers who are also of a similar age group. A lot of them are very sharp still, so mm -hmm. sharp minds that keep busy. Um, but the point is, is that it's a shame he will be missed heavily. Rest in peace, Larry. Rest um, in peace, man. You were you were an incredible creator.